Okay, I accidentally killed the recording there. But now we, we did a wild card here, and that's B star. Now I'm going to take that out. I'm going to do it the other way around. Do a star sun, S-O-N. That means starts with anything, but the last three letters must be S-O-N. Just one. Okay. One person, but she's had lots of visits, so we can see that as well. And not only that, let's go back to design view again, take out the sun, take out that entire criteria, and let's switch over to the invoice item, and let's do this one. Star cast, as in on your arm, broken arm, star. Two stars? You can do that? Mm-hmm. Normally if you use two, it's like this, it's the beginning at the end. What does that say? That says that it contains the word cast somewhere. There could be anything at the beginning, including nothing. Then the word cast, and anything at the end, including nothing. And so as long as there's a cast in there someplace, this is how you do in there anywhere. Not the beginning, not the end, anywhere. If we run this, we'll see. We get cast at the beginning, get cast at the end. Oh, maybe not. Should have. I didn't spell it right. Cast, not case. Remember when you edit, leave the like, leave the stars, leave the quotes, leave it all alone. And notice I get one that matched because it has cast at the beginning. Here's one that matched with the cast at the end. Unfortunately, there's none with cast in the middle. If there were, they would have matched. Very powerful. A lot of people use it to answer all kinds of questions. Like, let's do one more. Like, <laughs> let's go back. Take that one out. Now let's go to the invoice date. Once again, I want everybody in 2015. Or in December of 2015. You can use the wildcard. 12 slash, I don't care what the day is, star slash 2015. I could ask the same question. Give me a list of anybody who ever came in December, any year. 12, star, done. You don't even have to put slashes in. If you run this again, you get everybody in December of 2015. So that's even a little easier than between, though most people think of between first. All right, uh, before we close that, while we're at it here, let's modify the font size. The book has you do this. If you, this is too small for you, change the font up here, home tab, same place, look around. Why isn't it over on the left like it's supposed to be? I don't know, that's where I would put it. But 14, now everything's bigger, resize, just like always, and now everything fits. So you can make them bigger. If you have lots and lots of records, they can be hard to read. So what some people like to do is use alternating row color so that every other row is a different color. On my toolbar, it's the very last one on the end here on the text formatting. If you touch it, it says alternate row color. Drop it down, pick a color, doesn't matter which one, and now every other row, if you click in there, you should see it, there we go. Every other row is a different color, which occasionally makes this easier to read. That's especially true when there's lots of columns going across. Go ahead and save that. Let's call this using like, even though it's got a few other things in it. And close it. Got your thinking caps on? That wasn't bad. Now things get a little more interesting. Let's create another query using visits and billing. Create query visits and billing. You can select them using the control key or add them separately. It doesn't matter. And according to my cheat sheet here, we want the visit ID, the patient ID, which is really dumb, visit date. And then under billing, we want the invoice item first. Then was it paid? Invoice paid. And finally, the invoice amount. 
people who don't pay and are late have to pay a fee. Okay, so the first thing we want to know is, did these people pay? Well, this is one of those yes-no fields. The invoice paid is a yes-no field. So when you're checking to see if this is on or off, you check for yes or no. And so I want to know invoice paid, no. And we only charge extra if they haven't, um, if it's late. If it, let's pretend it's the beginning of January of 16. So we go to the, I don't have the date. Well, I guess we better add it then. So that's the invoice date. I'm going to add that on the end. Okay. And I don't want it there. I want it before the invoice paid. And I want the criteria to be 1116. Actually, less than 1116. If they have, if it's, if they, if they paid, if they had, if they invoiced them before January and they still haven't paid, we're going to ding them. First, let's make a list, make sure everybody hasn't paid and everybody's 116. Okay, everybody's in 2015 and they haven't paid. We're not going to charge the people who paid, and we're not going to ding the people who haven't paid yet, though we might include them in the list so we can send them a letter going, hey, if you don't pay within the next couple of weeks, we're going to ding you. How much do we charge them? Well, there's nothing in the database that says, here's the late fee. So we're going to calculate it. Good. Go back. Did you put no in invoice paid? Or did you put it someplace else? Yep. Did you put this date in invoice date? Did you add the invoice date up here? Is it there? The, the column's there? Just type a 1 slash 1 slash 2016. Run it. Good. Okay. Back to design mode. We don't have a late fee, so we have to calculate it. Remember what I said earlier on in theory of queries? We don't store calculated fields. We calculate them when we need them because computers are fast, right? Blazingly fast, and they're smarter than we are. If I had to figure out the late fee, calculate it on a calculator, I'd mistype it, and then put it in here, I'd probably mistype it a third time, and it'd be a mess. Just let the computer do it. To create a calculated field, you click the first empty column. Have we saved this? No. Before we do, save it, because this is a very important step. Let's save this as unpaid. Can't type. Unpaid invoice late fee. Man. Time to quit. Unfortunately, we're not done yet. Unpaid invoice late fee. If you save it first, it makes this next step easier. If you haven't saved it, this next step doesn't work. I think you might even have to run it. Just be safe. Let's run. Please. There we go. Back to design view. And now I'm going to click. I'm still selected in that outermost column here. I'm going to use the builder, the magic wand button right here. You can right click down here and choose the builder as well. Either one. This helps you build equations. Good news is the equations you're building here are nowhere near as complex as they were in Excel. They're very simple equations. Take one value, subtract it from another. Take this value, multiply by 100, whatever. Very simple equations. Doesn't mean they have to be. Access can do very complex equations as well. Because we have saved and run the query, notice that the, val the fields that I have in my query are listed here under expression categories. If they're not there, then you, let's just do this for practice. Then you have to come over here to the table or the database. Pick the appropriate table. Which one do I want? I want the invoice amount, so that's in billing. And there's invoice amount again. It's still there, but it's much harder to find. Here's my query. So if you save it first, you're better off. 
I want the invoice amount. Our late fee is a percentage of the invoice amount, and I couldn't believe this when I saw it. It was 2%. It's a hospital, for heaven's sakes. I'm sure that's not 200%. But anyways, 2% is what they said. So I just multiplied by 0 0.02. That's 2%. It's a calculated field. You click on OK. And now you have a new column. And if you stretch that column a little bit, you can see the whole equation is inside there. And at the beginning, it's added this expression one thing. Every column has to have a name. This one's calculated. It's made from thin air, so it gave it a name, expression. That's a stupid name. To fix it, here's my advice. Double-click expression one can't see it up on the screen, but you should be able to see it on your screen. There is a colon after expression one. Don't remove it. It's what separates the name from the calculation. You could have typed it in the equation. When we had invoice times 0 0.02, you could have gone to the beginning and typed late fee colon. Late fee, no spaces, it's a field name. Don't type another colon, that causes trouble. One colon is all you need. Now, if we run that, we get a calculated field. And let's see, we'll do one here where the math is easy. 2% of 100 is 2. Sounds good to me. 2% of 150 is 3. Sounds right. So that's two of them that are right. That means the rest of them must be right. Well, maybe not. But I'm feeling pretty good. I don't like the format, and I don't like the fact that this doesn't have a space. Let's go back to design view. In design view, I can now modify this column by changing its properties. To get to the properties, you first have to turn on the property sheet. You can get added up there, or once again, I believe you can right click down here, and there's properties, and you get this extra tab on the side. Make sure that your calculated field is still selected, though, that you're not on one of the other columns. And notice here, I can put in a caption, just like we did when we were building the tables. Every field got a caption. When you do calculated, you have to change the properties. So that's late space fee. So that's where you put the spaces in the properties. And I didn't like the format. It's money, so let's change the format to currency. And I want to make sure there's always two decimal places. I don't trust access, so I'm going to put in two. So I've defined a caption for it so it looks better, and I formatted it currency two decimal places, run it again, and oh, it's beautiful. 64 cent late fee. Cost them more than that in stamps, but that's okay. Got our calculations. That's how you create calculated fields. Click in an empty column. Use the builder. You don't have to, but you, I recommend it. You can just type that, all that stuff in there, you can type it manually. But you might have to remember the square brackets around the invoice amount. Where'd that come from? Access added them. You don't really need them, hint, hint, as long as there's no spaces in your names, and heaven forbid there should be spaces in your names, right? Field names. If there's no spaces in your field names, you don't need to square brackets. So you could have just typed in there invoice amount times 0 0.02, and it would have been just fine. The builder simplifies the process a little bit. Close and save, and you can close the property sheet for now, too. In the book, I'm jumping ahead to 161. And in 161, they start talking about aggregate functions. That's just a big word for statistics, which is its own big word, but it's a big word, fancy word, for statistics. We can ask Access to calculate statistics for us, like averages and counts and max and mins and sums. Sound familiar? Kind of like Excel. Except Access has some cool features that Excel finds a little more difficult to do. So that's the concept. We're just generating statistics. The technical term is aggregate. 
queries. Let's create a new query, this time just using the billing table. Actually, excuse me, before you do that, before you create the query, just cancel it if you stack got too far. Just open the billing table. Just like in Excel, on the Home tab, go to the Home tab, Access has a Totals button. Exactly like Excel. Doesn't work exactly the same, but it's the same idea. If you click on that, Access will add a new row to the bottom of your table. If you look very closely at mine, you'll see it says Total. That row is actually way down at the bottom, even though we haven't scrolled down that far. It is way down at the bottom. It just kind of gets stuck on the screen so that you can always see it. And you can calculate the total of anything. So let's calculate the total of the invoice amount. You click in the column, drop down the list, and pick what kind of statistic you want. You're not stuck with some. You can also do other statistics. So some of these things we can do at in Datasheet View. Occasionally that comes in handy. But what if I want a list of people who have paid and how much they owe, and people who haven't paid and how much they owe? Uh, that's not a quite as simple here. So let's turn the total row off. Am I supposed to do that? No, just close the table and don't save it. That'll do it. No. Now the billing table closed. The total wasn't included. Now let's create that query based on billing. Create query design, just the billing table, add it, close it. Once you learn how to use multiple tables, you always want to use lots of them. And I know some people who, just to be safe, throw them all on there. Yeah, that's really good until you get to big databases. My Wisconsin Lions Camp database has 60 tables. Putting them all on there for one query doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I have to be a little smart about where's the data that I want. But if some of it's here and some of it's way over there, i got to get all the tables in between. Otherwise, I can't link them together. Here's another thing that you might not anticipate you could do. Let's grab the invoice amount, add it to the query. Then grab the invoice amount, add it to the query. Wait a minute, I just did. Do it again. Then grab the invoice amount, add it to the query. I want three different statistics for invoice amounts. So I need three different columns. How do I get the statistics here? Uh, trusty Dusty Totals button. Click it. And notice now down in your QBE grid, we have a new row, stupid name, called Totals. And every one of the fields says group by, group by, group by. We'll learn what that means in a minute. In the meantime, we're going to change them all. Because what I want is the minimum invoice amount the average invo invoice amount, and the maximum. To calculate those, you simply change the group by. Min, average, max. And now we can run. And Access very quickly figures out that the minimum invoice of everybody is 30, the maximum, the average invoice is 101, and the maximum is 450. Now, those are pretty stupid names across the top. We can change them. First of all, to make the programmers happy, we should assign a name to the field, just like we did our calculated field. This is a calculated field. Back to design view. How did we assign a name to that one? Well, it said expression 1 colon, we replaced it. Here, there's nothing to replace, but we can still add, this is called an alias, an alternate name for this. We can say minimum amount AMT colon. It can be whatever you want, but with a colon. So minimum, and you can even say min AMT if you don't want to type that much. Notice over on the right, my property sheet is still open. If yours isn't open, click the property sheet button and bring it back. And let's add a caption to this right away. And I'm going to put in here minimum AMT. Or I'm going to write the whole thing up. Whatever you want. Let's see what it looks like. 
No, it needs to be resized. But other than that, minimum amount. That's good. And now you could do the others exactly the same way. Let's do one more, then we're going to quit, just in the interest of time. So one more, back to design view, and in front of average invoice amount in that column, I'm going to type average AMT colon. That's the alias. That's what the programmers use. And then in the caption, average amount. Notice that these fields, because they're calculated, also have a format, also have decimal places, but these don't need them because they're already formatted. How come? Because they're statistic based on the amount, which was already formatted for currency, so the totals must, must want currency for those totals, and sure enough. What happened? Oh, I forgot to save my caption, I think. Yep. Got to press enter or something to make that stick. Average amount, enter. Run it again. Much better. Okay, now you get the idea, and you just have to do it again for every single column. It's the same process. It's kind of tedious, but the book wants aliases. I don't think they call them that. For the programmers, and they also want names for humans with spaces in them. Let's save that. Invoice amount statistics. Now the next query I want to do is similar to that. So let's make a copy of it, but let's do it a different way. Let's do file. And actually, it's probably not a bad idea to find my invoice amount statistics. There it is. And then file, save as. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Save as? Won't that save my whole database with a new name? Because that's what Ben did before class. Yeah, that will if you say save the database. But if you say save an object, it'll save the object with a new name. So let's do save object. Okay. And do you want to save it as a query or do you want to save it as a PDF file? I think I want to save it as a query. So it's a good thing we picked it first. Save as. And what do you want to call this? How about copy of invoice? No, that's not good. Invoice amount statistics on the end. Take off the copy of. Invoice amount statistics by on the end. Walk in. Did they walk in? If they did, how much did they spend? If they didn't, how much did they spend? Click on OK. Now up here it says invoice amount by walk-in. I'm going to go back to design view. And I want to add the walk-in field. Oh, there's no walk-in field. It's because it's part of visit. Let's add visits. She'll go to show table. Add the visits table. It's linked. That's good. And there's the walk-in field. Notice even when you do aggregate queries, you can do calculated fields that take one number from this table and that table and another number from there, from three different tables and bring them all together into one calculated field. Be right with you. Now, I want the walk-in to be first. So drag the walk-in field from here to the beginning. And notice it says group by. What the group by means is for each category of walk-ins, which in this case is just yes and no's, Calculate these statistics for every category. Automatically. Magic. Run. And now the walk-ins, I have a minimum and a maximum. And the not walk-ins, I had appointments, I have a minimum and a maximum. And I can analyze these. And that's just two. Let's change it. Do you need help? Where'd you get it? I query real quick because I forgot to turn on the recording. I have to find my query. Notice it's kind of tough to find. Invoices by walk-in. You don't have to follow. Just hang on a second. Here's the design view. What we did before I started the recording is I took out the walk-in, I added the patient table, and I dragged city in here. So now I'm getting my statistics 
min average max for each city. So that wasn't in the recording, but that's what I did. You can try it on your own. Now we were talking about how we can change what's listed here from all objects, which is what normally lists all objects or object type, to tables and related views. Remember, views are queries. What Access has done for me is listed all the tables, visits, billing, patients, and then listed all the stuff that's related to it. Here's all the queries that use visits. Here's all the queries. Here's the form that uses visits. Here's the queries that use billing, and if you look carefully, you'll see there's some overlap. There's the walk-in query. There's the walk-in query. That's what confuses me. When I'm looking for queries, I'm usually looking for queries. When I'm looking for tables, I'm usually looking for tables. We drop that list down. We can just say, I only want the patients table. And there's all the stuff that's related to patients. I haven't found much use for this personally, but the book discusses it, so I have to discuss it. And I don't think that even made it to the quiz, to the exam. I always have it in object type, that way everything's sorted. And if I want to hide stuff, here's a little chevrons. I can click those and hide my forms and reports and tables and just concentrate on queries if that's what I want. And then easily bring them back by clicking on the chevrons again. Whew. Kept up pretty good. So maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but those calculated fields, the aggregate queries can sometimes throw people for a loop. Now it's your turn. Case number one. By the way, it was too hard for the other classes. He switched it to number two. I thought you could handle it. It must be the smart class. You can handle it. Right, so that's case number one. Again, when you take the exam, read very carefully. If you're having trouble with the projects, I haven't seen too many people tackling the projects. I personally think they're easier than the exam sometimes. But if you're having trouble posting those projects, make sure you save them and then send them to me. I'll figure out a way to give you grade.